a simple man. A quiet man. But how my brother and I looked forward to our summers with father. Go Speed Racer! Go Speed Racer! Go Speed Racer! Go! He's up and running as he goes a car around the track. He's jamming down the pedal like he's never coming back. Eventually waiting just ahead. You little dudes having fun? Remember, always keep your eyes on the road. <laughs> no hands! Oh shit! Pedestrians! Oh, do not hit the pedestrians! Run you bitches! <laughs> it's, perhaps it's best if I don't drive on the sidewalk. Fun fact, I first saw your mama at a strip club. Swanky Yum Yums! That's my dancer name. Yeah, I was working that pole doing the famous midnight ball drop. Your mama put a 20 in my thong. We've been in love ever since. All right. It is getting late. Help me get your brother out of his car seat. Your turn to drive, little man. Welcome to the and heroic get me your funky wear pig live from the glorious no pants zone studios throw those pants in the air like you just don't care what a blessed day i got the comfy shirt on the underwear scented candle is keeping us all warm the lights are up i got boy child 1.0 riding the exercise bike that powers our commodore 64 magic in fact the entire staff of 1000 showed up today what are you doing here? I gave you off for your birthday. Always watching. Oh. Yeah, okay. You know what? I'm giving each and every one of you a huge Christmas bonus. Except for you, 924. And you know why. You keep pouring coffee in my Zima. I do not drink coffee this early in the morning. And I bet you thought I forgot somebody because I'm usually too busy thinking to be thinking. But I promised myself this season that I would definitely, absolutely remember Boy Child 2.0. And I know he's one of you guys. I just want to let you know, I feel the connection. But what is most important in keeping with the true meaning of the season is that there are no breaks on the dick train. This is the third Funky Wear Pig Casey Lansdale annual holiday special. We move the word annual, that way the holiday is annual, not us. Not that I would ever miss this special. Casey's here and I'm not. I'm never getting my show back. We all know and love her, but I should give her an official introduction. Author, singer-songwriter, kick bahuki performer, and, and I'm going to trust you guys on this, Oscar award-winning actress for her inspirational role in Christmas with the Dead. This ain't no cosplay, Casey. The original Casey Lansdale is here. Now, let me address the elephant in the room. The most important part of any holiday special is the big duet between the host and the superstar guest. It's no secret we have had trouble with this in the past. Well, in rehearsals, I hit a high note that was so spectacular, it launched Casey off the couch. Take a look. Remember, 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 remember. Did you really leave? <laughs> <laughs> I was wadded up. I couldn't get up. <laughs> I guess she hit a table on the way down and sprained her larynx, kind of specific targeting. And uh, then she says to me, I can't even speak. And I said, uh, I just heard you. And she said, that's because I'm a level 42 yogi and I'm talking directly into your brain. 
she is so amazing. So yeah, no duet again this year, but she will be finally playing her auto harp for us. And this is going to be the best Christmas I've ever had. We'll be playing my favorite Casey song, Good Girl. And that's how the good girl, bad boy, bad girl, bad girl, bad boy, bad boy thing gets started. And that's how the good girl, bad boy, bad girl, boo, 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 boo. And that's how the good girl, bad boy, bad boy, big. And that's how the one fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish thing gets started. And that's how the good girl, bad boy, bad girl, good boy thing gets started. Oh, that's how the good boy, good girl fish. We'll be playing my other favorite Casey song, Tremble. Oh, okay. We should take care of this one piece of bitness. Uh, the Funky Wear Pig will be undergoing a name change. Uh, to keep up with younger audiences, much like Weight Watchers and Dunkin' Donuts and Angie's List did, uh, the, the Funky Wear Pig will be shortening its name. From now on, we'll be known as Fooey. <laughs> Fooey. It's so stupid. Let's get this party going. And there's only one way to merge the Wang with the Chung. <laughs> with flawless continuity, there he is, like a first date who brings you home for sex, but not with her. Live via satellite through Zoom, our own musical director, JJ Glamour. JJ, how are you, good sir? I only want to say, if there is a way, take this cup away from me. I don't want to taste its poison. Yeah, heard that. Not quite sure what it has to do with Christmas, though. You know what Christmas story always hits me in the feels? Little Drummer Boy. Have you ever seen it? Yeah. This uh, uh, orphan claymation kid, he's on his own after his family gets killed, right? So he winds up in Bethlehem the very night that baby Jesus is born. Now, he only has with him, you know, his, his drums and his best friend, uh, this little lamb. Well, this Roman chariot comes book-assing around the corner and squashes the little lamb. <laughs> You kind of have to watch the to to not see the humor in it, but that's you know laughter is good though laughter is good. So let's let's go with that. Let's go with that. There's so many great days to celebrate in December. Would you, good sir, play us out to the Magic Farmers Comedy Break? Greg, I happen to know your birthday is in December. And it got me thinking about the magical bond between a mother and her child. So here's a little song I like to call, Does Your Baby Always Look Like That? There are things in this world we cannot explain, such as this unpaid promotion by well-respected West Virginia cryptid hunters, Clem and Little Bra Beckley. Yo, you probably know us from that paranormal show, This Shit Be Haunted. Or our best-selling children's pop-up book, Cryptoids with Hemorrhoids. We're here to talk about our best friend's new product. November Malone's Raspberry Sasquatch Chokeweed Gummies. Whoo wee! We go into a lot of scary places, pursuing the Mothman, New Jersey Debo. We even spent the night in the Amityville Horror House. The Amityville what? Horror House. Horror. As in scary? That's what I'm saying. No, you're right. You're right. 
People ask us all the time, where do you get the courage to take such dangerous missions into the unknown? It's the gummies. Our friend November Malone will fix you right up. I'm chewing a gummy right now, and I'm in an alternative dimension called now. Behold the Magic Farmers Incorporated! Speak, Mukau! Speak! You're not the boss of me! Foretelling the future. Uncovering the secrets of the past. Speaking to loved ones that are no longer among us. What you are about to see is for reals. Welcome to Gretchen Bloom, kinda psychic. Even before she was born, little Miss Bloom knew she had special powers. As a child at summer camp, a druid said with practice and a lot of peyote, little Gretchen could open her mind to another dimension. Now, with astral projection, chicken bones, and a Disney pass leading to many portals of hell, Gretchen Bloom can talk to the dead. Now, kinda psychic, with your guide, Gretchen Bloom. Mama say, Mama say, Mama say. I am Gretchen Bloom, and I have been described as freakishly kinda psychic. Full disclosure on how my process works. When the other side contacts me, I may receive an initial for a name. Likewise, I may receive a number. Regardless, it will mean something significant to you and the other side. Most psychics only want you to remember the hits, but I want you to remember the times I was wrong. Because I'm not. You are. Questioning the spirit world jams my psyche, whoopshes my aura, and yanks my Ouija! Believe me, you do not want to yank my Ouija. Oh, by Hecate, I will curb stomp you with a curse! Vincent, what is today's curse? Today's curse is the floating buttocks. A big ghostly fat ass bounces into your head for the next three days. And we are not talking about freshly bathed and powder. Jennifer love you it, but we are talking gator hunting swamp ass. Enough yappy yappy. We will now begin. I must call down the ancient chant that my forefathers once taught me. I spy with my little eye. Incoming! Ah, it's our second caller, Diego. He has a personal question for you. Thanks for asking. And now it's time for our viewer testimony. This comes from Eric, who saw our live show in Ohio. My girlfriend and I saw Gretchen Bloom in a live show once. She pointed out to me in the audience and told me to switch seats. 40 minutes later, the roof collapsed. And that was her way of showing, now's not your time to go. I mean, I miss my girlfriend, but that show was amazing. Gretchen Bloom made me a true believer. Journeys for another day. 
our transcendental four lines will be open again tomorrow. But you already know that. I know you know that. For I am Gretchen Bloom, kind of psychic. Happy holidays, guys. It's Sharon from I Smell Sheep. And this month's book recommendation is The Maze Cutter by James Dashner. The Maze Cutter by James Dashner, a follow-up to James Dashner's popular young adult series, The Maze Runner. 73 years after the events of the death cure, when Thomas and the other immunes were sent to an island to survive the flare-triggered apocalypse, their descendants have thrived. A rusty old boat shows up one day with a woman bearing dark news of the mainland. The group is forced to embark back to civilization where they find cranks have evolved into a more violent, intelligent version. Our reviewer, Holly, had this to say. The Maze Runner has been my longtime favorite series. And while I loved the story when I read it back in 2014, I was initially concerned this book would fall outside of my interests. However, I was pleasantly surprised with this newest edition of the series. Cutter was written with older fans in mind, as Dashner includes some great nods and references to the original series. This book is not for people who have yet to read the original series. All in all, The Maze Cutter thoroughly exceeded my expectations, and I recommend it to old and new fans of The Maze Runner series alike. I Smell Sheep gives The Maze Cutter by James Dashner for Maze Cutting Sheep. <laughs> Until next time. Check out the award-winning review site for books, comics, and movies. Your funky weird pig loves iSmellSheep.com. We now return to Mutual of Idaho's Wild Kingdom with Marlon Perkins. One adventure it was, going with Jim into the wilds of the Congo with treacherous terrain, infectious diseases, and dangerous animals. But what is life if you don't face danger head on? <laughs> Join us next week when we go into the wilds of Detroit. Give that globe another spin, Jim. And now, this holiday message from your funky wear pig. Oh, 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 before I forget, we got some business to take care of. Look at this. Look at this. The brand new funky wear pig fun book. Smile when it's big enough. Uh, everything you love about the show is in this book, plus five original short stories. It is the kooky, the spooky, the kick bahooky. And it is the perfect holiday gift. Just go to Amazon Books. And look, this, this isn't about changing the world. This isn't about soothing today's anxieties. This is about the 85 cents I get per book. And now this holiday message from the Boy Childs. The Funky Wear Pig economic empire collapsed due to expensive hair and makeup people our father investing all of our money in a cryptocurrency called Tat Dat Ass, and of course, as you'd know it, Zima. So much Zima. The No Pant Zone makes 85 cents for every fun book sold. You could change a life. Won't you help? Smile when it's big enough at Amazon Books. Buy the laughter and the bullshit. Hi, I'm J.J. Glamour, musical director of The Funky Wear Pig and competitive stamp licker. Being a world famous rock star, the number one question people ask me is, what is your favorite edible? November Malone's Raspberry Sasquatch Chokeweed Gummies. Already doing this. But the second question they always ask is, you have the most ravenous fans. How do I become a glamour head? It used to require strict fan club guidelines. 
like owning every album I ever recorded, signing your name to a blank check, and performing a hit on a random person of my choosing. But now, for the holidays, I waive the requirements. Everyone can be a glamour head, and the perks are amazing. Get ready to be spoiled, you nine-toed Amish hooker. We call each other that all the time. <laughs> we have such fun. Just for joining, you get my latest album, live from Ireland. Where the fuck am I? We send a cake on your birthday with your own specific positive affirmation. 28 years, guinea worm free. Congratulations, Bill. My webinars teach you how to play a classic rock song. This month is Piano Man by Billy Joel. Play us a song, you're the piano man. All glamour heads get a matching tattoo. Celebrating my favorite documentary, Bubba Hotep. And backstage passes during my summer tour to meet me and my imaginary friend Zola. Bloop. <laughs> I'm joking. He's not imaginary. He's from my home planet. Hurry and join now because this limited chance to become a glamour head ends February 30th. Hard to find my earlier albums? Being a glamour head has its perks. I have boxes and boxes of eight tracks in my attic. I just yell up there, hey, grandma. Hand me down a 1971, my name is JJ, spelled with a J. It's okay, grandma lives up there. You know, ancient wisdom says the only way to erase the holes in one's life is to eat the donut around them. Confucius said that, or maybe Steve Kornacki. Let me fill your holes, be a glamour head. Isn't it time? You lived your dream. Subscribe to the Funky Wear Pig and let the laughter and the music drop right into your hands. Remember, if you know someone who doesn't believe in religion, humanity, or even Santa, get them a gift anyway. It's always fun to watch a nihilist have a cheat day. Three, three straight years, you've been showing up for the Funky Wear Pig, Casey Lansdale, annual holiday special. What is your problem? <laughs> I'm a glutton for punishment. <laughs> well, we, we begin every conversation when we start planning this thing that your first words are always, how is this possible? We just got finished doing this. It I, really, it's true. I mean, this year flew by and I think I was talking about this the other day. I think it went in hyperdrive more than usual just because of how slowed down we were globally for the first couple of years. So now that we're like back at a regular speed and maybe have overcorrected in some cases, it just feels like everything is flying, flying, flying. So I have no idea how it's December. It, it's really unbelievable. What have you been up to? <laughs> I was going to say, my friend, that is some deep shit. You th We're not a minute into the show and you're doing like Greek philosophy stuff. That's right. <laughs> what the hell? I guess you're figuring it's the third year. I have my rights now. That's right. I'm just, I'm putting it all out there now. You know, I, I was trying to ease everybody in, but year three, that's just where it all you know, yeah, that's uh, next year you're going to be fighting for top billing. I know you. That's right. Let mm -hmm. me take care of business. I was running late. We should have done this before we started, but I was cutting my own hair. So uh, I hate to do this in front of the public because I like to keep things behind the camera. But here we go. OK, taking care of business, uh, as you know, uh, and, and obviously the audience isn't stupid. I pay my guests to be here like every other talk show. So, hmm. so this year you have your usual choices, uh, autographed headshot. Um, you have, this is new. This is new. Our ghost soap, home, homemade ghost soap, better than Lumi. Oh, 
Lumi's. <laughs> better than Lumi. You can put this everywhere, and it beats the crap out of Lumi. And then, as usual, a Wendy's coupon book. Um, I think you went coupon book last year. Hold on. Let me... uh, so think about it real quick. I just want to check something. Yep. Doesn't expire yet. So you got a couple weeks. What would you like to do? You know what? I'm going to go headshot this year. Yeah. Right. And and uh, I already <laughs> autographed it for you. It says, Perfect. you are my very best friend. Exactly right. Yeah. Exactly it's, right. And, you know, it's on every headshot I have. But don't, I don't say that. No, but I meant it for you. You were the oh. first one that I wrote. And then I just Xerox the rest. Okay. <laughs> so it's all about the you. It'll all go in a place the, of honor. <laughs> well, you had you 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 grew up poor. You know, you went through the tough times. Um they weren't they weren't glory years for you. And uh whereas a lot of little girls, you know, they have their magical bedroom. You had a shelf. A shelf. Um I wonder is, where we were going with this. <laughs> this is heartbreaking. Go ahead, put up the picture. Put up the picture. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that was that was a family who figured out the best to do with what they had. That was <laughs> But look where you are now. Look where you are now. Like look behind you. I know I can stand upright. I I don't live in any shelf on this bookcase. <laughs> no, you put books on the bookshelf. The whole bookcase is mine. <laughs> do you think that that in some way was a weird inspiration for you to become the writer you are you know um, what it's like to be a book you lived on a shelf there yes <laughs> i felt like i could connect on another level <laughs> I, end scene right. um, <laughs> the uh the book writing we talked about this obviously the past couple of years especially because of the 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 worldwide ickiness right. there was only so much we could go out and do uh, so you dove a lot into the books. Dove a lot into the books. And now it's it's a good period because, you know, you go through these creative cycles where you're making, making, and you have nothing to show for it. And then you go through the release cycle. And yes. I think the last couple of years when I've spoken to you, I've been in the, the create cycle. And so now I'm finally in a release cycle and it's, you know, it's gratifying and it's nice to have tangible things to show for your work because- you know, you, you you do so much and then you have so little to show. So this is a good moment for uh, everything that I've been doing the last few years. There was, I think we talked about this maybe last year. There was a a, a book with your dad. It was a, it might've just been your solo work, uh, uh, a short story collection. That we've, I've had a couple things. So you might be referring to Terror is Our Business. Which, no, no, that one I know. That's the Dana Roberts or something yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know that one. That that's groovy. That's cool. Okay, and and that's I, that's out or is that a sequel well, or is that a reissue? Okay, so <laughs> I actually pulled up my Instagram. This is how bad it is. I pulled up my Instagram so I could uh, look and cheat at what's happening right now. So at what, you, what, at what you've done <laughs> at what's happening? Yeah, because I you know it all kind of runs together. Because you, like I say, I've been working on stuff for years and yeah. then years later it comes out. So you forget what order you forget kind of what's going on. Um, so Terror is Our Business is the collection I did with my dad. And then that okay. is now coming out in a limited edition from SST okay. and just released in Italy with Inaudi. So that's, okay. a, there's a new life there. That, that makes sense because I was going to say there's another one, but the title was in French which didn't make any sense because then you went to Italy to promote right. it. <laughs> so it's, yeah, it's um, Non Aprite Quella Morta and it's a play on words. So don't open death's door is basically the rough translation. Okay. And So depending on who you ask, either it's a very clever play on words title or it has nothing to do with the story that are stories that are in the collection. So for me, I don't know the difference. So I'm just happy to have a book <laughs> and, uh, and people respond accordingly. So um, that's going on with that collection. And then my father and I have another collection of stories that are not in that universe. They're all standalone stories. 
Okay. And it's coming out as a limited from Thunderstorm. And then uh, I have several stories that I've been working on solo that are starting to release. And so those are coming out in different collections. And there uh, was, that's uh, might be what you're seeing. Uh, yeah. Well, I know, I know the uh, um, terror or whatever is our business. Mm -hmm. That one I know. And then I knew the, the, the French one that you uh, that were you, you were there for like, you were doing like some major promotions there. Were you like but, there in Italy for like a month? Italy, but yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it'd be really weird if I were promoting it in France, but you know, stranger things have happened. Um, but yeah, we went, we went for, uh, we went for a while. And then I also pa uh, tacked on a week at the end just for holiday. So uh, it was a really good visit. We did some promotion. We were able to do some stuff for my father's work alone for our book together. And then I'm going back this summer and I'll be doing some promotion for some other work there as well. So it's going to be cool. a, a busy, a busy time for that. And I'm just, oh my gosh, I'm so grateful. I mean, I remember my mom used to listen to your rhythmics and, and I, uh, you know, at oh. the time, it was just like whatever my mom was listening to. I was like, "Oh man, turn it off!" And then I got older, and I was like, "Shit, that's amazing." <laughs> I okay. <laughs> I, I'm going to say this, and I know it might be too late because I'm sure you already mailed me my Christmas gift. Um, but you just gave me <laughs> the the idea, the idea of Miss Karen rocking out to the Eurythmics. That's all I ever needed. That's in here now. That's you know what here. she used to do? She used to pick me up from school blasting the Ramones. So she'd pull up in her purple PT cruiser, psychotherapy, psychotherapy. And I was like, oh, my God, I'm so Stop, ashamed. stop, <laughs> no, stop. Because just when I think I can't worship Miss Karen anymore, then you tell me, oh, and by the way, she liked the Ramones. Yeah, you know, she, she, was, uh, she was very eclectic and, and also very different. You know, my dad kind of listened to this portion of music and my mom filled in the rest. And so between the two of them, I got a really healthy education on different genres. It's good. Yeah, I was I was mortified. My mom was I was like, oh, my God, how embarrassing. And now I look back, I'm like, my mom's cool. Oh, I just forget. Yeah. Forget this. Forget this. <laughs> no, not forget it because you you and I got to pay you. But you know what I want? I'm very serious about this. You know what I want? I mean, an autographed picture of Miss Karen. Yeah, well, we all do. <laughs> she's elusive, you know. She's not. I hate to tap the rumor mill, but I do. I do. I believe my people, my staff of a thousand, have told me. They saw various postings on all the social media stuff, face space, Instagram, looky here, who dat, all those. You 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 actually got to hit the stage again as Casey the singer. Is that correct? Yeah, I did. And it was so nice. You know, it's it's weird because I took so much time off and the, you know, the voice is a muscle. And so yep, it we went, yep, with the Mm -hmm. you no, know, and I haven't been working it in that way. So it was really um, wasn't a challenge because I, I was surprised how easily it all came back. But it was definitely like a little bit of a psychological battle of like, all <laughs> right, you know, can we do this? Do we know what we're doing? Or is, you know, is the body and the mouth and the words and the, you know, so it, it was nice to do it. And I think next summer I'll probably do some touring when I'm in Europe and, uh, and maybe let that be sort of the springboard to move forward. Because when you got up on stage, was it just like Bruce Springsteen reached down, was like Casey Lansdale, and pulled you up out of the you know audience, or had you backstage and waved you out, <laughs> or did you have any prep time? Like you knew you were invited I to hit the stage beforehand. I have had a couple drop-in gigs where I just dropped in and did a few songs and hit down, but <clears throat> um, I did have one or maybe two that was a planned show hour and a half. And I was splitting it with my guitar player who has a, a, a Neil young sort of tribute band, I guess. And I thought, oh, okay. okay, so it was, it was a no pressure kind of gig. And I thought that that was the best way to kind of 
reintroduce myself. And I could feel that it, yes. it was warming up. So the first couple songs, I could feel that I was sort of um, searching for it, searching for, you know, the uh, just the, the groove, the flow. And then I think by about the third song, I was like, oh, yeah, here we are. I, I forgot about this. And I and you forget how good it feels, too, because yeah. you get off, you're like, all right, I'm done. But in the moment, it's really, you know, cathartic. That is so cool. That is I'm so happy for you because I know, Thanks. you know, in the past two years we've talked, you know, that's been a it's been, uh, tough. It's been tough. But, but uh, it was nice to do a couple. So that one was a low pressure. And then from there, I've been able to kind of get back up and go, OK, so we're not where we were. But we're not we're not as far gone as we as I may have thought. Right. right. You know. Well, here's here's the thing. And and I don't want your head to explode because <laughs> I know you. Um a lot of it is you gotta work the muscle. You gotta knock the dust off. You mm -hmm. know, any performer that goes up on stage has that after a lull. Do I still have it or is it gone? Or did I miss that window or whatever? But then there's that thing called talent. Yeah. And Casey Lansdale has talent. Thank so you. you can put dust all over talent and go, and dust <laughs> goes, talent remains. You so, know what? Thank you. Thanks for saying that. And I'm going to keep that visual. So the next time I get up and I'm like, oh God, can I do this? I'm going to just imagine that like, in all of the, <laughs> the debris, you A know. Big where pig face enters your, your mind. You know, it's true. It's going to be good though. I it's, that's more helpful than you may realize. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, it's <laughs> just truth. And like it. I like I'm it. Just truth. <laughs> and then obviously work it out in Europe. That's what they're for. <laughs> That's right. You know, they didn't understand English anyway. So just sing your butt off and, you know, just work it out there. And then as anyone knows, when you, when you come back for the American tour, if you want to be successful, the first stop is Pennsylvania. Well, I mean, that's what everybody says. <laughs> everybody says it all the time. I got to tell you, there is something to just, I love, I love, I mean, you know, that being on tour was why I met you being, I mean, I, I had so yeah. much cool. I mean, just like so many cool things happened when I was on the road in different levels. You know, I've, I've done radio tour, I've done house tours, I've done bigger tour. Like, so I really hit the road and there is a part of me that's like, you know, it's pretty great waking up, being in my pajamas and just writing on this <laughs> laptop. But I do miss sort of getting out and meeting people and, and being, you know, able to have this global community that I wouldn't have otherwise. So it's it's really, uh, you know, it's a challenge and a battle, an internal battle. Well, I remember you when I think it was Restless maybe came out. Probably. And, and you were just on a mad tour and you were doing like five freaking AM radio interviews a day and then doing shows at night. You were just grinding like crazy. But you were maybe, what, 23, 24 at the time. Now you're 30, 31. Do you still have that kind of energy? No, to I do didn't that kind of grind energy then. I don't and that's the question right I mean it's a real thing because you get older and you're kind of like I don't know I'm pretty comfortable here <laughs> so what I have tried to lean into other than the fiction writing is the idea of doing more writing for film and television for music and and letting oh. that be how I express the musical side so I'm still navigating through that but I think there's ways to do what I love that are, are is more suited to my nature and my preferred lifestyle. I get that. I get the the Casey lifestyle is legendary. <laughs> I mean, we have covered it extensively. I'm wearing I, my yoga pants right now. <laughs> <laughs> I I have written a book called How to Casey that should be coming out soon. It's a how-to book. The uh, bed at which 9 tell, p.m. <laughs> 9 p.m. But you're one of these people that just doesn't go to bed. Now, oh, it's nine o'clock. I got to go to bed. You start easing into it by five. You're not wrong. <laughs> no, I'm not. No, I'm not. You st it's a slow roll to end your day. My phone gives me a little, it really does. Eight, sincerely, 8.30. It goes like your go to bed <laughs> alarm is coming off. So 8.30, I know it's time to wind down. Nine o'clock, my text message is shut off. So if anybody dies between 9 p.m. and 8 a.m., I'm not going to hear about it because 
everybody knows you're not going to get a hold of me and you're still going to be dead in the morning. And this is my last night of good sleep. So let me have this. It's that sunshine optimism that spurs us all (laughs) on. Keeps you young, Greg. (laughs) Do you feel as you've settled down into life a little bit, because you never settle down your, uh, 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 as you, as you've eased into who Casey Lansdale is and you're able to put this here and that there, and now I need to do this and bring that in. Do you find, I don't want to say less inspiration because you have inspiration everywhere, but as far as writing, strumming, singing a song, do you, find that you know unlike restless the songs don't come quick quick and quick even if you do concentrate on them i think it's less about that and more about the awareness of the finite amount of time that we all have on this planet and sort of going like all right i've got this much time what is important to me and how do i want to spend it and how much of that needs to be work to to live and survive and continue to create and how much of that needs to be Um, the things that I want to look back on in my life and be able to say I have accomplished, done, and whether that's travel or spending time with family or friends or, you know, even, you know, as you mentioned, we moved into our first home last year, you know, that was, that took a lot of focus and and putting time and energy towards that and and making that a place that felt uh, like ours. So that became something that was more important to me I'd rather work in the yard that day, for example, than go oh, write a song, you know? So because I like that. I like oh. that though. So, you know, it's hard. It, it, it's a moment in my life where all of that is sort of up in the air and um, it has happened before, but it's happening differently now. And so I'm trying to sort of balance those things that I'm acutely aware of and also trying to stay creative and, and buy things. <laughs> I like that though. I I hope everyone was listening to that because I think that's important. When when you get to a point in your life that yes, I've got to do these things and I've got a legacy to live behind and and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But today I really I I, I really just want to do some gardening. You know, today I want to go to the beach and just play catch with my dog. Yeah. And I wanna I just really want to honor those things while I have the luxury and ability to do it. And I, and I know that I'm very fortunate to be able to say, Hey, I want to take this day and drive out to the beach. And, you know, we, we literally took our dog to the beach for the first time and it was the happiest he's ever been. And it just, you know, it's nice. It's nice to be able to do that. And instead of feeling like I have to grind, 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 grind. Um, and, and I'm, you know, just giving myself permission as a human being to sort of uh, relax and not have to meet expectations either that I set for myself that no longer reflect my life or that I feel are put on me by others, whatever, you know, that answer is. So it's like finding that ability to say, I'm going to carve out time and space for me. And how do I stay in the mix of the things that I enjoy doing creatively? You, you know who would say that? You know who would say that? A level forty-two yogi master. There you go. That's right. That's, yeah, oh. I, you don't. You don't. You don't need a twenty-sided <laughs> dice to have that kind of insight. You know, you you have it. It's in level you. Forty-three. <laughs> Boom. Well, actually, for I guess a yogi master would be. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what yogi masters do. I'm saying I'm the worst yogi on the planet in terms of like the the lifestyle and the culture. And, um, you know, I have friends that very much live in that space and they know all the intricacies of who's involved in what. And I'm like, I have no idea who these people are. I just want to move my body and feel good. (laughs) And that's why you're level 42 yogi. And they're all like level 41 because once you reach level 42, you don't need to know no names. You don't need to know what anyone else is doing. You said to yourself, you just want to move. Just want to. Well, and you know what? The other thing I'm realizing too is like yoga isn't always necessarily, I mean, I don't want to get too woo-woo on you, but like it's not always necessarily the physical movement. It's like a state of being and well, a, you're, and you're a talking, state of I'm, mindset. I'm, since we have last talked and you have inspired me 
to pursue yoga. Yogi, yogi, whatever okay. it is, the plural. Mm -hmm. uh, um, I'm at least like level two and a half. Hey. So I'm on the charts. <laughs> so I get it. It's the inner it's the inner peace. It's, it's the, it's the aligning. I didn't say I had inner peace. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying you're good at it. You've achieved it yet. I'm just saying, you know, it's the aligning of the chakras, you know, it's, it's the, uh, um, one of the new how to books I'm writing is how to channel your groinal chi. There you Bam! go. <laughs> you know, uh, a lot of people forget the groinal chi uh, is equally important. So you've got to put all that in alignment. And and you understand that you've been there. You could I write think this. I they book. call that the root chakra. <laughs> 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 I think that's the more socially acceptable version. I have never been socially acceptable, but I'm going to write yeah. that down. <laughs> Thank you. That's. I'm going to work. I'm going to work on my my PC yogi. There you go. <laughs> so root, yeah, because that doesn't sound root yeah, at I know. all. There's, there's really no good. I, I'm yeah. not really. That's the 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 groinal. people. Groinal are. is a delicate word. Groinal. Right. It it does you sound. Know, that's something that Lumi would talk about. You know, groinal. It, it does sound more. Uh, whereas, like root. Successful. That's that's just Casey Lansdale just cutting through the bullshit. Root. <laughs> when so, you say it like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But last time on the show, you walked me through. You walked me through some some stuff some exercise oh, I, I can do that. uh just simple exercise you could do and i i do them now do you really or are you messing I, have i ever messed with okay no okay no I, I, no but like let me put my arms down, uh, on the thing i remember this one okay this is this is you put your okay down on the thing like this uh -huh. and you you straighten your shoulders you don't uh -huh. whatever yeah. you don't create your shoulder and you lean. Oh, yeah. Okay. There you go. Your you head do? one way. Yeah. Nice. And I'm going to do the short yeah. version. Uh, oh, I've got to keep my shoulder up a little bit. I'll, I'll do the short version. Back and relax, down. Relax. Yeah. Relax. Relax. Yeah, back and down. There we go. And then you go like that. I'll do the short version mm -hmm. because in the original thing, you told me to hold this for six hours each side. <laughs> so this is, this is the short but I know that one. And then there was one that was kind of like this and you do this and then this and or something. A little... Yeah, like that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Da -da. Da -da. <laughs> so, so yeah. yeah. Yeah, I pay attention. So I was hoping, I was hoping, uh, um, you know, as we wrap things up, that you would share something else with me and the piggy petters. That, that we can do you just and and you just finished teaching your five hours because this is a sunday <laughs> yeah. yeah no this show's live totally um, live <laughs> uh, on a sunday um actually christmas is a sunday so ha 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 i'll edit this all out yes this is on christmas day sunday that's right <laughs> and and you just spent all morning teaching yoga which you do yeah um but, but one thing that everybody can do yes this is good. You can do it driving. You could do it in any situation where you're seated. I maybe not driving because I'm too busy texting when I drive. <laughs> well, so I don't want to multitask. I wouldn't want to interfere with that. But if you've got, so you let's say you're driving, you got the steering wheel, right? So I you can it. do a cat cow. So cat cow, cow would be a pull up, pull the shoulders back and down, lift the chest. A cat would be a scoop out the belly, round the spine. Inhale, lift. And then exhale round. So that's this with the steering wheel. You can do it with the on the chair. I've already hit a wall. Back and down, and you go back, and you just get that synovial fluid going up and down the spine. It just kind of, uh, you know, lubricates the joints, for lack of a better phrase. So for a guy like me, an old guy like me, it's almost like you're sitting down or standing up doing the worm. In its own way, yeah. Nailed it. Nailed I it. am now three and a half yogi, <laughs> level three and a half. I mean, you definitely leleded up. There's no doubt. <laughs> I saw it happen. I like, oh. <laughs> um, do you ever get the urge when the creativity hits you to walk right past the guitar and pick up an auto harp? 
Nah, <laughs> I got to tell you, I abandoned the auto harp. <laughs> it was, it was too hard to uh, get it tuned and put together. But it is still sitting there, taunting, <laughs> staring at me. <laughs> taunting you. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Um. Yeah, I know. I know. Well, this is awkward. This I know. Is I know what you're saying. Because <laughs> I, I, I was planning to dedicate 20 minutes of this interview to the auto harp. I believe in you. And when you say, when we do the third, uh, uh, Funky Wear Pig Casey Lansdale annual holiday special. I think okay. I read that correctly. Uh, it. When, when we do that one, when we do that one, is it going to be an auto harp? Or what is it? It's going to be an auto harp, two songs, and something cool that I don't even. I haven't even cooked up yet because it's got to be so fresh and wonderful that it's going to take me all year to put it together. Yeah. How's that? That keeps me going. I mean, out of heart, two songs and something cool that I don't even, I haven't even cooked up yet because it's got to be so fresh and wonderful that it's going to take me all year to put it together. One last trivia question. Okay. Talking about music. Right. And this is for all the marbles. This is going to define whether we are still besties or not. Okay. Ready? What is my favorite music? Type of music? Annie Lennox. <laughs> How'd I do? How'd I do? <laughs> what would be my favorite type of music? <laughs> what what show are you on the oh okay <laughs> is it funky you know what it's christmas it's christmas <laughs> we're still besties we're still besties you know what that's generous of you <laughs> i cannot thank you once again for being my glutton for punishment three three do you want to put do you want to put money down on four? Uh for what? In what odds? <laughs> In what <answer? laughs> Let's just leave it at that. That's safe. Okay. Let's I'm just leave it for four. I'm gonna we're doing this. I mean, I feel like we have to at least get to ten. Oh yeah. Yeah. Then we can reassess. Because at ten, the tenth, we both sit in big chairs <laughs> and we do the best of. That's right. We get real lazy at 10 and That's sit right. in the chairs. And here's what I'm going to do to make it extra special. We're going to shoot it at 8.30 at night. So <laughs> it'll be an hour-long special so they can watch you fade. Yeah, I'll just yeah. I'll just be sleeping. Yeah, yeah, no, we're going to have to do a highlight reel at that point. <laughs> yeah, by the time, yeah, long credits, like Star Wars credits. Yeah. With you in the background going. Surely we have a, a enough for a blooper reel at some point too, right? I feel like we could put one of those out there. I can do an hour long blooper reel now. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> we'll do that for season five. <laughs> season five, season five. We'll take that year off and just do bloopers. Love it. I so love have it. somebody like John Cena be the host. Yeah, let's do that. Let's he call him. Do it. He would do it. He would do it. <laughs> you you have connections. Are you ready, Piggy Petters? And let's put the needle to the record. It feels just like a hurricane blowing high the wind. It's a cosmic rumble.
Songwriter, performer, swing by CaseyLansdale.com to enjoy her books, her music, and her projects. You can also follow Casey on Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. I wanted to respond to some emails we've gotten regarding a comment I made a few shows back dealing with pole dancing. Some of you were asking, uh, are you really a pole dancer? And the answer, of course, is yes. Yes, I am. The reason you haven't connected the dots is because my dancer name is Swanky Yum Yums. I work over at the TTOC down the street. Uh, that's Turn the Other Cheek. It's a wonderful club. I've been out for years. Uh, unfortunately, I'm, I've been out due to a little accident. Uh, it was during uh, New Year's. I did the famous Midnight Ball Drop. And um, I, Miss Maggie was waving a 20. I went to reach for it, fell off the pole, and bam! I completely injured my cock. Cock, 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 uh, cock, coxes, coxix. Um, but it's all completely on me. Good news is, medically cleared, I'll be back on the pole in July. So stop by at uh, uh, two to four between dinner and lunch uh, to catch me in what they call the early bird special. Swanky Yum Yums Club TTOC New Year's Eve Booty Boy Bash. Like a clock on a wall, said ding, ding, dong, it's time to check the monkey clock. You know, the batteries in the monkey clock died long ago, so when I look up and I see that the time is 10 after 12, that is the correct time. Because one does not argue with monkey clock. Hugs and oinks to our special guest, our one guest, because she does it all, our annual holiday partner in crime, Casey Lansdale. Just when I think you can't kick more butt, you kick more butt, and then that butt. It's just what you do. Uh, you know, on this side of the camera, we get so excited every year. We look forward to this because we love to party with you. And I'm sure on your side, it's a little different. I, I know you're someone who digs a challenge. So you probably look at this like a uh, like surviving a Japanese game show. Okay, we, we weren't going to do this during the show, but uh, I think we're just going to go ahead and pull the trigger. Um, after we wrap up this season, the Boy Childs and I will be shooting our first feature film. Uh, we're looking at more like a, a, a late 2023 release. Casey, you are one of the most talented and versatile people we know, and you've been in a few movies. Uh, but we also know how absolutely busy you are. And now that the world's opened back up, you're going to be squeezing every second out of every day. Uh, as long as it's before 9 p.m., because then that's that's night night. But you have a story to tell, and no time to tell it. Who better than me to tell it for you? Casey, my life in Greg's words. We don't want you to worry about anything. Uh, having to visit the set, a meeting with the actors, reading the script. You won't even have to fact check, because you know I have you covered. We've already contacted Jennifer Lawrence, and she's on board. She is so excited to play the role 
of Miss Karen. Uh, we're obviously looking at Chris Evans for Keith, and I, I do a cameo as Joe R. Lansdale. He's a good-looking guy, so the role came easy to me. And the biggest announcement to capture everything that is truly Casey, we needed someone who is equally magnificent. So we signed on Stanley Tucci. No, no, no. You don't have to say a thing. Knowing you is thanks enough. Oh, is this Jennifer? I have to take this. High fives and disco hip bumps to the Magic Farmers Incorporated. Good boy. I have a November slash him alone. Present James K. Polk. If it's our fan of the month, it's got to be War Dog and those double decker banana moon pies. And special thanks to the Detroit Lions. Just because, damn it. I want to take a moment and, and thank everyone who sent me birthday wishes. Being a December baby is tough, man. Uh, I usually get comboed with Christmas or some other holiday, but it made my heart happy that so many of you, uh, you know, did the messages and the phone calls, took the time to say, hey. Uh, speaking of which, um, speaking of special days, we should let you guys go. We all have people to see and places to be. And, and let's celebrate New Year's where it should be. April. Boycott this January travesty. A New Year's should have green grass and sunshine and squirrels doing it everywhere. Your No Pants Zone News Desk with award-winning anchor Brian Williams Jr. The News, Vincenzo. I'm your TV Jesus, and here now are today's top headlines. Society Blinded by Division The World Ending in Our Lifetime People Infected with Social Media Brain Rot So why the hell are these people laughing? They all share one thing in common. November Malone's Raspberry Sasquatch Chokeweed Gummies. When you can't remember, if you mention November Malone's Raspberry Sasquatch Chokeweed Gummies yet. That shit makes everything funny, son. Somebody hit me three times. I don't know who that employee is, but he's fun. All right, it is time to dive under the covers and pretend you're asleep so Santa just doesn't fly over your house. Them's is the rules. So there you go. JJ, JJ, our musical director, JJ Glamour. We got to wrap this up, man, and get out of here. But what a show. What a fantastic holiday show once again. That's three of them. Bam, bam, bam. You know, in bowling, they call that a turkey. Here, we got to start calling it a Casey. Uh-huh. So... If you can, let's do what we do. Let's put that needle to the record. Let's throw those pants in the air like we just don't care. And if you would, good sir, play us out and, uh, oh, yeah, make it something funky. a rich man i'd give all my money to the poor which would then be me so i might as well keep it